Hi everyone. I'm here with John Green. Hi John. John's a little busy right now. Uh, but John and I were just talking about symbolism and I thought this would be a fantastic opportunity to tell all of you about what we were just talking about. So we've all seen symbols in our lives. Like this tells us to stop, this tells us to walk, and this right here tells us we're about to eat something that's insanely good. We're going to feel great about it, and then we're going to feel awful uh, in about two hours. They're all symbols. Now, some of you diligent students may even know that symbols can even be literary. They can be found in your favorite books, stories, poems, and novels. But what you may not have heard, there's an important English teacher secret. Now, the National Council of Teachers of English, uh, and this is their logo right here, we meet once a year and we come up with secrets that need to be kept from students. We meet in the back room of really old libraries and after one full hour of just sniffing the old books, we sit around, drink black coffee, and come up with ways to terrorize our students. Uh, and this is a secret I have for you. Well, I could lose my job for saying this, actually. So many English teachers will be really mad at me, but do you promise not to tell anyone? All right, fine. I'll tell you, but you have to be quiet about it. No tweeting the secret as soon as the video is over. All right, you ready? Symbols in literature are not actually there to torture students. There, I said it. What they're actually there for is to add more meaning. Think about it this way. I could tell you about the girl I love. Not quite. Um, no, actually, not really. Oh, come on! Uh, cute, but no. Ooh, that's closer. Uh, there, right there. Perfect. So, I could just say that I love this woman, or I could tell you about her house, and I could talk about the dock behind her house, and then I could mention the green light at the end of that dock, and I could explain how every night I stand at the end of my dock reaching out toward that light. And instead of telling you that it is my only dream in life to be with her, I could tell you that I believe in the green light, the orgastic future that year by year recedes before us. It eluded us then, but that's no matter. Tomorrow we will run faster, stretch out our arms farther, because I love her so much. So I use the green light not to torture students, but to make my feelings real, to make them visceral. I want you to not only hear what I'm saying, but also to feel it. So I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Mr. G, this all sounds great, but so what? I, I get that a symbol in a novel stands for something bigger than itself. I even get that it's like a big extended metaphor, but so what? And that, anonymous student, is a fantastic question. And I do have an answer to that. We need to care about symbols because we want to be understood. We want other people to comprehend our feelings. Whether you're writing a letter, having a conversation, writing a song, or even getting married, you're going to need symbols. So here's a story for you. Okay, I'm going to a funeral. I wear black because black symbolizes death. On my way to the cemetery, I follow the funeral procession with a purple flag on my window. That's another symbol. As I'm driving, I realize that I'm hungry and I need to stop. Up ahead, I see the golden arches towering above the trees. So I drive through and I get a salad, of course, but I make an illegal left turn as I'm leaving, and I see flashing lights behind me. This symbolizes to me that I need to pull over. And as the police officer comes to my window, I put both hands on the wheel to symbolize to her that I'm unarmed. And yes, in this story, I get stopped by a lady cop, and she got me thinking I can date a cop. And please tell me you get that reference. Anyway, I see that she isn't wearing a wedding ring. This symbolizes to me that she's single. And skipping ahead with the story, things work out so that we're at a fancy restaurant together and it's on our first date. No, I said fancy. Okay, yeah, that's better. After I hit her with some of that green light symbolism from before, I relax a little and I can enjoy my meal, but as I'm eating, I start to choke on my food. So I put my hands over my throat like this, which my new girlfriend knows that that's the sign for choking. In fact, it means, hey, pretty lady, I'm choking over here. Would you mind dropping the chalupa and saving my life? So she gives me the Heimlich maneuver and everything's fine. The only problem is that my throat is still sore from the choking and I can't talk. Even worse, 
this is my moment to propose. So without saying anything, I just get down on one knee and show her the ring. And it's a ring pop because I'm a baller on a budget. Luckily, she knows that this is the symbol for a proposal, so I don't need to say anything. And that, right there, is how symbolism helped me get pretend married to my imaginary wife. Thanks for watching. See y'all later. I'm on a boat.